Oh, yeah, well, I want to apologize to somebody. Uh, we call, I caused some confusion by calling um, Stephen, Dr. Stephen Schroeder, PhD. <laughs> I thought it was just funny. Uh, it was just kind of a gag, but apparently it was taken seriously, and I understand that, you know? Why would someone do something like that? I don't know why I did it. So I apologize for causing the confusion. I, t- you know, I removed the PhD. Uh, for the record, I always thought PhD stood for Pretty Helpful Dude. Apparently, it means something else, so I'm sorry. But, yeah, Stephen had nothing to do with that. Uh, apparently, there was some guy trolling him, talking about, oh, you know, you're trying to lie, this, that, and the other. It, it, Stephen had nothing to do with it. It was all just me being an idiot, and it's all over with, so try to find something else to criticize. <laughs> no, every, everything's for a reason, and I was thinking that myself, you know. It's like, okay, this is this is kind of interesting, because you, you just got to understand from, from where I'm coming from, I've got I've got skeptics that go back decades that have been just waiting <laughs> every day for to find anything that they can prove is untrue what I say you know so obviously it was for a reason because it, it definitely drew out the true colors of those who instead of hearing the message or it wanting to debate the validity of the message they want to attack the messenger and say aha I mean you never put you know, doctor with PhD together like that. And you got these people get on there and say, there's people that paid a lot of good money and spent a lot of years, you know, to get those titles for somebody just to claim it. And I was like, you know, if I was going to claim something I wasn't or something like that, if I was delusional or something, I wouldn't claim to be a doctor. Anybody with money can be a doctor. I've done more research and studied books to find out the information I got than anybody who's been to college. That's, you know, that's what I was thinking. I mean, why aren't you a doctor? You know, you're a doctor, and as far as I, I'm concerned, you're an expert. Why? Why? That's what I'm saying. Why would I? Why would I settle on being a doctor? Right. Like I, like I told my brother-in-law, I am what I am, and I'm, I'm pretty, pretty content with that. Not too many people can do that. No, not very many people can be that. And you can't. Money can't buy it, and and hitting the books isn't isn't going to cut it. So. It's just the haters will hate, you know, and instead of debating the validity of the claim, they want to make it a personal thing. And it's just one of those things. It's like, you know what? Did you even take the time to listen to what the message was? Or are you just like, aha, I've got stones for sale. I've got stones for sale. Right. Right. I, and uh, I missed the actual thread or whatever. But, yeah, I definitely want that guy to know it was all me and – uh and it's over with. So yeah, wh- but yeah, guy out there, you should respond to what the video was about. So the Tecumseh second come. Yeah. But yeah, so you know, you know, yeah, like you said, it uh, brings out the snakes in the grass. You know who to. Uh, <laughs> to yeah, you just, you just can't sweat the small stuff. You got to just keep on keeping on, persevere, and you know, it's it's you know the thing the thing that really gets me is. It's like the only the only naysayers that I have are, are people in my own family or my own my own household. And the consolation I get out of it is this was foretold and written a long time ago that you know this would cause division within one's own household where you know brother be against brother and and that's the way it is. So I just accept that as evidence and proof that once again the word is legit and true. And I just don't I just don't sweat it. I, there's too much going on, too much big stuff going on to worry about what somebody thinks of me, what somebody says about me. But, you know, like I, I try to warn them, you know, it's like, you know, you attacking me and saying things about me, you know, that's fine and dandy and, and it doesn't bother me. But the problem is, is, is your sin against me doesn't stop with me. It affects other people. Now, just did you ever take the time to pause out and consider what would happen if you're wrong and there's people out there that need to know this information and you was one preventing that from happening? I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, you know, so... Either way, I feel sorry for her, so I'm not, I'm not taking the time to try to, you know, contest anything or declare my innocence, this, that, and the other. It's, it's not about me, and it seems like they, they can't debate the truth of the facts of the matter, so they want to, you know, make it a personal thing because everybody's got flaws, so that's easy for them to deflect from what they really need to do, and that's discern the truth of the matter, of the message, you know. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. Like if anybody listening, or whatever, if you've never experienced the YouTube comments thing, or just comments about just the message of God in general, and and the more the more off the beaten path the message is, the more 
just garbage you get thrown at you. Like, try to go out there and say any of the stuff like that we talk about on this show. There's always going to be somebody that pops up out of nowhere that you you're, you can't even believe it, but they found you and they hate you. They just hate what you're saying. They want you to die for some reason. And it's like, wow, it's just really crazy the, the stuff that you attract on the Internet when you stick your hand up and say, hey, I believe this or I'm considering this, you know. But, you know, it's it's not all bad, but I'm sorry that that guy said that to you, especially at, by my hand, you know, but it, but I guess uh, you can't you got to worry about that. Anything, anything, any kind of persecution I get, that's that's like a merit badge. So I ain't sweating nothing. So don't feel bad about anything. I apologize. To anything but me, just people out there need to, I don't know, lighten up, get real, some, you know, slapped or something. <laughs> yeah, that, I was watching something on TV. They actually proved that slapping somebody does awaken your senses, like you're more alert and stuff. So, yeah, if, if you're ever falling asleep, you slap yourself, or if you can convince somebody to let you slap them. Try it out; it seems to work. Well, but, like those old movies they have, you'll see where the guy, you know, just slaps the chick because there's a, a certain time of the month where women will get crazy on you, and they call that lunacy, and that comes from the moon's effect during that time period. And they, you know, that was everybody knew that you would slap them to make them knock them into their senses. I mean, wow. that's assault now. Don't do that. But back in the days, that was, you know, it was one of those things where it was one of those things that you had to do. And then, you crazy. know, like, I mean, I'm not, not knock them out or, or hit them with your palm oh, or anything. Right, right, right. Shock them, shock them into reality. <laughs> right. I, yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah, that is the, the idea. And you see that back in the old 50s movies and stuff like, get a hold of yourself, man. You know, it's like kind of comical. But I have. <laughs> I've never heard that about the, the a the lunacy comes from the woman's lunar cycle. Is that the idea? Like her? Yeah, period? that's 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 exactly where lunacy comes from. And, and so when a woman behaves like that once a month, that's where they get the term lunacy and a lunatic because it's the lunar influence that it has. And that's one of those things that you can't escape. It's like how it affects the the tides and and the growth of plants and everything. You know, it's one of those things you can't escape like gravity. But one of those things that make you snap out of it is that if you notice in all the movies and everything that happens, even in real life, you ever seen it happen, they do snap back into it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it works, you know. And yes, yeah, so like I said, I even saw that thing where they <laughs> they tried it. You know, it was one of those shows where they do experiments. You know, it's, it's uh, not, not Mythbusters, but one of them just like it. And yeah, they proved that it was real. So, you know, there's something to it. Um but yeah, again, it's just crazy. It's the times, so. how they how they change, you know, the, to the moon, Alice, you know, like. Not anymore. No moon, Alice, no. anymore. <laughs> no. Those were the good old days, and the good old days were behind us, it seems, because times they are changing. Yeah, now we're, we're going to get um, somebody say, oh, you think the good old days was when you could slap women around? Uh, you know, we're not saying that. Uh, it's just, you call that time period the good old days. That's what they call it. Moving on. So, no, <laughs> back, in, back in the days when things worked, that's the way it was and nobody made it into a political contest or a challenge or you know you hurt my feelings or you insulted me it, it's 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 all hypocrisy it's like put on your big boy pants and get over it you know it's like islam insult and christianity at the same time you're not allowed to insult islam it's like well wait a minute if they get rid of their crayon that, that calls our religious a, a monstrous thing you know and calls it an unforgivable sin and kills people because of it then we'll talk about feelings. But other than that, you can't be coming in here talking smack like that and all of a sudden tell me, well, you can't say this because it insults Islam. You can't say Islamic terrorists because it is. Give me a break. It, that ain't the way it works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> right. Okay, well, but today you, you had a topic. You said you wanted to uh, talk about the, um, the location of the tree of forbidden knowledge. Is that right? That's it. Have you heard anywhere else? Have and, I heard? Uh, have I heard that anywhere else? Yeah, that, that somebody knows where the location is. No, I have heard people talk about um, the lo the possible location of the Garden of Eden, um, but not the 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 tree of knowledge of good and evil. I that is a. Are you suggesting that's somewhere on Earth? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it has to be a physical reality. If it's in the book, and I believe in the book, and that's what I stand on, is the book, which is the Bible. So there's no question or any concerns or doubt. I'm all about the word. I'm all about truth. Okay, so we can put that as my foundation, and that's that's what I'm about. Right. Okay. 
And so if it's in the Bible and it says it, then it's true. So when they talk about Adam and Eve and they talk about 6,000 years ago and you've got dinosaur bones and other facts that prove the earth is, you know, a lot older than 6,000 years, you got to come to the physical reality of what is truth. And the story of Adam and Eve, if you think about it, it has to be true. It has to be a physical reality. But it doesn't have to be the physical reality that you learned in Sunday school that you comprehend as that's how it began. Because once you understand the mystery of God, and we've explained that, then you understand that if we are indeed in the end time, if we are in the last days, then you and I and everybody else around us, we should be able to see the beginning. We should be able to see the fall of man. We should be able to see the garden. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I yeah. Mean, the end comes before the beginning, so if, if, if that's what it is, then we should be able to see this tree, and we can. And that's, to me, the evidence that we are in the last, final days of the end of days because we can see the fall of man by this tree of forbidden knowledge, this tree of knowledge, an actual physical tree and it's it just so happens to be the world's largest christmas tree mm. okay so once you understand that the world's largest christmas tree just happens to be at this location in the midst of this garden which the state poem acknowledges is paradise because i live here and it's paradise to me but in the midst of the garden in the center of the garden is this tree and this is the tree of knowledge. This is the location of where it was because this is the location of where it currently is. And the fall of man is when everything has come full circle. Where the beginning of man, the nature of man was sinful and fallen and needed a redeemer and a savior. And man then had the perfect opportunity. Then comes the story of which one will you pick? Because we all sin because of Adam. We all receive grace because of Christ. It was finished. But now man has come full circle. And he has to pick between obeying the voice of the creator. Or obeying the voice of the serpent. And where you'll find the tree of knowledge. They can say well we found the tree of knowledge. But unless you can prove that that is a place where the voice of the serpent can be heard. That is aka his throne or his dwelling place then you haven't really found the tree of knowledge because where the tree of knowledge is, that's where you will hear the voice of the serpent. And that's where the voice of the serpent comes from, is from this tree of knowledge, which is downtown Indianapolis, magic circle, magic square, built for the sole purpose of being like a shim, a mooring post for these celestial astral gods and goddesses to moor. It's like a mooring post where they can moor up and then they ascend spirally downward travel the shadow into their house or dwelling place, their temple that was built for them. It's called the Indiana State Capitol, through the false door. It's all set up just like the Egyptian high magic, and it all has the same purpose. But downtown Indianapolis, that location, the Mars Square, when you get when you get into these magic squares and you see how Indianapolis was built on these foundation of these six by six mile squares, which is a sun square, which is total six six six. That's the base foundation. And then they took the two miles up in the northeast corner of that six by six square. And they used a Babylonian formula, which is a Babylonian birth chart. It's called the Tablet of Destiny, which Ishtar is the keeper of the Tablet of Destiny. And they put that on top of that two mile squares in the northeast corner of that six by six. And in that one mile square in the center, of it, which is the actual place where the whatever it is going to be born put that in the center like if you just want to do a 13 house horoscope with this Babylonian birth chart the center square is where the person goes or whatever's being born is in the center square there that's how they do their their magic and the Indianapolis was built the same way with that center square being a one mile square and they changed that into a five by five Mars square Mars the Roman god of war and in the center square that five by five is 13 and that's where they put the obelisk of the god of war Mars, and on top of that obelisk is Victory, the Roman goddess of war. 
the same goddess that you saw on the Empire State Building a couple weeks ago by the EPA. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, we talked about in the last episode, you pointed out that, yeah, they, they put, uh, no, that was Ishtar though, right? Or no, they put that yeah, on the side of, uh, on the side of, uh, well, you go ahead and explain it. What was it again? <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was the, uh, they said it was a Hindu goddess, um, Kali, but if you Google it, it's, it's the same goddess of the Babylonians, uh, Ishtar, and it's the same as the Egyptians, Isis. I mean, she's got numerous names, but it's all the same goddess. She's the goddess of death and war and destruction. That's, she's the snake goddess. She's the one who demanded, you know, fetal sacrifice. But that's what brings me to this point. She, she was also about, I was reading some stuff, she's also about sacrificing any and all living things. So, I mean, cattle, everything, everything that has life is fair game. So even grains and, and trees. And when you, when you understand that, that Obama just put that declaration into where all waterways belong to him and he gave it all the power to the EPA, all of a sudden EPA destroys this Colorado River. And trust me when I say all life depends on these waterways. Every animal, every creature, all life depends on these waterways. Okay, and I can't stress that enough. And for them to claim domain over all those, give it to the EPA, and then the EPA had this disaster now was it an accident because of incompetence or neglect or was it domestic terrorism or even worse what if it could be a possible sacrifice when you think about this goddess and acknowledging this goddess and when it comes time to bad situations and they call out for the assistance of the goddess they've got to acknowledge her and give her things such as a sacrifice i'm saying when you see stuff like the Colorado River, and you understand what they are all about, and you understand the M.O. of their goddess, the Colorado River could be nothing more than a sacrifice of a living thing that we don't even understand or comprehend what's what's really going on here. Yeah, and that, wow, that's, it takes a while before your brain to really accept yeah, yeah, that that's yeah, that, true. That, that, yeah. Yeah, that's what hit me about Revelation, you know. It was it was one of these verses talking about, it was t asking God how much longer, O Lord, holy and true, before you avenge us, our blood upon those who, who are on the earth, and talking about uh, how much longer before you avenge uh, those who destroy the earth. There, the enemy is, is actually not only the destroyer wants to destroy all living things. It's not that he just wants human sacrifice or animal sacrifice. It's anything that's living, that can be sacrificed. And I'm saying this is a time of sacrifices taking place. A lot of sacrificing going on. We're talking about daily sacrificing. We're not just talking about wars and conflicts. We're not talking about just violence in the street. We're talking about, you know, abortion and child sacrifice and, and not only just human beings, but living things, such as the planet which all life depends on. And when you have a waterway, especially out there where they're already having a drought and shortage of water, to have a boo-boo like that happen and it like be no big deal and you don't even hear about it anymore after devastating something like that, like, oh, it'll recover. Yeah, it's just like a, an oak tree in the wintertime. Yeah, you think it's dead? Yeah, it'll come back to life. The river will come back to life sooner or later. Meanwhile, what does everything that has to depend on that life, white life source right there do until then? You know? I mean, that, that, that kind of mistake, if there's not some kind of investigation or some kind of, you know, somebody getting fired or some kind of consequences for devastating the earth like that. And then when you consider if it was negligence, which, you know, can be understandable, I think, but most indicators point to, you know, something shady going on. And these guys are not above sacrifice. And that's why when you understand about 911 and all these other things, like the USS Indianapolis that delivered the nuke, you know, coming back. Right. You know, the, they said it was a Japanese submarine, but it was a submarine that had been captured with one of our own kind of things. When you understand that they are actually serious about this sacrifice, I mean, you got to start realizing exactly the depth of the evil of the adversary, man, because when they're talking about sacrifice, if you don't say something about the babies, you know, that can't speak or scream out, if you don't do something, they're, they're, 
you're, you're next. They're coming after you next. It's, a, it's about sacrificing life. It's about sacrificing what's good. And you might not want to say anything about the horrors that's going on with the unborn and, you know, child sacrifice like that, like witches getting intentionally impregnated so they can go have the sacrifices. Everybody wins. You know, everybody gets money. Science gets its stuff. Everybody's happy. And no one hears nobody screaming. You don't do something about that kind of stuff, I'm telling you. You'll be next. And then, and then what? Because unless you stand up against evil and speak out against it, you become its victim. And then become worse and you become its accomplice. And that's the whole purpose about separating and being told to be separate. Because if you don't, you'll end up a victim or an accomplice to the evil. So, And people don't... Saying. People don't know that, that there's another way, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people, you know, it's like, uh, I was watching something that, something that I found through something you had linked me to last time, but it was, um, it was a book, it was a DVD that I ordered called like, um, oh no, it, it was, um, it's some group that, that saves Christians. Like, you know, you give them money and then they go and rescue, rescue Christians. I think you had linked to it. All right. But it was like a Christian militancy DVD or whatever, you know, and he was he's talking about salt of the earth or whatever, you know, like um, we, you know, what does that mean to be the, the salt of the earth? The Bible says we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. And it was talking, he was mentioning it could be thought of as like salt on a steak, you know, salt is the flavoring of it, you know, without the flavor, you know, it's boring or it's bland or whatever. So we're supposed to, we're called to be kind of flavor to the world like you know the, the thing that is different like you said something that stands apart that's like oh there's everybody else and then there's that guy at work that's all that's all weird about jesus you know or whatever yeah, that's that that that's looking at salt as in a a flavoring i look at salt for its more practical purpose of preserving and we are the salt of the earth because we preserve life and we do that by spreading truth because truth is light and life so when and salt back in the days, I mean, at places around the Mediterranean where you have salt along the shore, they use it to fill potholes and chuck holes in the road. In other places, it's the most valuable thing on the earth, but its its basic purpose is preservation. Yeah, I, I like different you know ways of looking at it, and I guess they're all true. The salt is used for different things or whatever, but yeah. We're called to we're called to be different, you know. We're called to come out of her, you know, like you say, and and stand apart because people don't know it unless we say it, unless we stand out and say, yeah, da 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 da, da this that and the other. The, you know, the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil is downtown Indianapolis. That, that might be a, a a heavy one to lead off with, but yeah, just the uh, people seem to be more receptive to conversations about. Yeah, we all know that December twenty fifth is a pagan holiday that has nothing to do with Jesus. Um, same for Easter stuff like that. Um, I've talked to a lot of pagans, you know, and they they enjoy talking about that because they're like, yeah, you know, why do Christians do that? We wish they wouldn't do that, and it's like I they respect Christians who don't do that, but find it hard. Even to pa even pagans know the truth, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, they they just don't they don't like hypocrisy, and I guess that's what disgusts me about the Catholic Church and like just the blatant you know perversion of it. Is that is the face of God and Christians to the world, you know? And then they point to the Catholic Church for those atrocities of, you know, the, the Inquisition, right? Or the Crusades, I'm sorry. Well, it's it's basically when you combine a fertility cult with a uh, celibate priest, it's it's going to end just like... it's all It's all bell worship. I mean, if you look at the Vatican and you look at their dome and their obelisk and you look at Washington, D.C. and the dome and the obelisk, you'll see that it is a revived Roman Empire. They're one and the same. They look identical. They've got the same purpose going on. I mean, it's just the foretold great harlot that sits on seven hills that rides on the back of the beast. And that's what she's doing. She lays claim to, you know, this country here. And they discovered it in 1492. And it's domain of, of the Vatican, the corporation. It's... It's their claim to fame, but it's not the truth, and it's not the way it went down. And we got evidence that there was people here long before you know Rome decided to claim it was. We discovered this place; it's ours. <laughs> That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. 
so back um, back to the the tree of knowledge of good and evil being downtown Indianapolis. What does that does that mean anything as far as anything? I mean, can we go down there and you know get these? Oh yeah, get yeah all the, facts, or whatever? The that, all the facts that you need as far as to prove that it's the tree of knowledge is is downtown, and you can start by you know looking at the foundation of it, how it's built on three talismans stacked one on top of the other, three magic squares stacked on top of the other, making this three steps. And if you look at the Masonic uh, pictures of the girl and the goat or the girl and the old old man standing there on the right. platform, the weeping widow or something like they, the Masons call it. If you look, there's always three steps. It's their platform. She represents a Venus, the light bearer, and he represents the goat Capricorn, also the light bearer. They both bear the sun, you know, so they're light bearers. They're both Lucifer, if you look at the Latin term for light bearer. So it's the male, female. It's what Lucifer actually is, is the girl and the goat, Capricorn and Venus. That's that's the two gods and goddesses. It's the girl and the goat. It's the same book that Bush was reading when the attack happened in 911, The Girl and the Goat. Yeah, I did a video like It's like, wow, this Matrix has got way too many coincidences not to be documenting all these coincidences. So, yeah, I did a video on that one, too. My Pet Goat, book about the girl and the goat. That's... The girl, the goat's the transportation for the girl. That's like that that picture of uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, and she's got uh, she's riding in a chariot and she's got the tablets in her hand. And she's supposed to be recording history, and it's really it's the tablet of destiny, which is funny because that's Ishtar holding a tablet of destiny, and it's like she's writing history, but actually she's writing the destiny that they're going to manifest. Once you understand this mystery, of God thing it's pretty pretty trippy. And then on the chariot, if you look at the chariot. You know, it's just like the, the goat. It represents the goat because that's Capricorn, which is the transportation, which is what the Egyptians called the Shem, S-H-E-M. It's that boat that they use to travel through different time spaces, wormholes, whatever you call it, and come right. to these mooring posts where they can hook up, and they have a city built to accommodate them. It's like a landing. It's like a landing port for a astral vessel, which is called a Shem. Anyhow, the Capricorn. Anyhow, on that chariot that chicks on in in the Capitol's rotunda, you can see it. It's pretty. I got it posted. Um, she's riding in a chariot, and on the chariot, the chariot itself is George Washington, which is kind of neat. I mean, when you understand the picture of it all, it's kind of neat. I mean, it's it's an abomination, but it's just kind of neat when you catch these little things where you understand what the significance is. And then Monument Circle, this. This sacred union on the monument circle, and it's supposed to be a monument dedicated to the Civil War vets. Okay, even though they've included a side, you know, the Indians defeated and William Henry Harris defeated at the Battle of Tippecanoe, and that wasn't even a battle because the other side's leader wasn't even in town. So um, one side is is you know to glorify the, the the Battle of Tippecanoe, but it's supposed to be a Civil War monument, and it says to the sacred union. And that's the that's the funny part. The sacred union. What what sacred union? You think it's the Civil War? The sacred union they're talking about is the actual monument itself, which is Mars, the Roman god of war, his erect phallic, and the Roman goddess of war on top of that in her sexually superior position. That is the sacred union. That is their god and goddess. That is their that is the tree of knowledge. When you understand what biblical term for knowing is, when you know somebody or he knew her. When they use that term to know, it's in a sexual context as an in intercourse. So a tree of knowledge is a tree of knowing. When you understand a tree of knowing is a tree of understanding, procreation. It was a tree that was pleasant to behold, but it had the ability to speak. And when you see an obelisk, it says all kinds of different things, but mainly it speaks of an erect phallic symbol of somebody belonging to someone or somebody's religious faith like the Masons or the Egyptians, the sun worshippers, okay? But it has the ability to speak, and that's why they put hieroglyphs usually on the obelisk itself to give it power to speak. <laughs> so it actually has a, a an ability to speak. So number one, it is a tree. It is the world's largest tree. It's in the midst of of the country it's in the crossroads of america and it is you know like the little tree topper that you put the goddess on the top of the tree right uh, that's the way the angel is. right people put an angel on top of the tree 
Yeah, well, it's, it's actually the goddess, and that's how she ascends down, you know, like the garland that goes around a tree. Uh -huh. That's the path that they make down this obelisk into the, their capital. That's the procedure. I mean, the Egyptians actually used to build a boat and carry it around with the image of the goddess on it and did the circuits around, and that's why Islam circles around the Kaaba, the square. It's the same principle, because that is actually ascending when you do that, or descending, whichever way you rotate. <laughs> Right. But anyhow, that's that's what the mooring post is. So all I'm saying is there's a tree of knowledge, and that tree of knowledge is responsible for the fall of man because man became partakers of that tree of knowledge, which is that foundation that they built on those three talismans, okay, Babylonian, black magic, and then they put on top of that the actual magic square of Mars and opened the doorway and declared the state to be a goddess, Gave her an apotheosis ceremony. And see, this is where we go back to the Empire State Building. Here's something we didn't talk about last time. Is the artist, Henry Herring, that did all the artwork for this goddess. Because, see, the state had to get set up. It had to be built just exactly in replication, you know, in compliance with Washington, D.C. As far as these two cities being built for this sole purpose of, you know, one's where the sun god rises and the other one is where he goes into the underworld. These two cities set up for that sole purpose of this apotheosis. They get it set up, and then they have to go through the process of an apotheosis where they declare the state to be a goddess, to where the goddess is actually the state, and the state is actually the goddess. And it's all secret, secret, but it's all in plain sight, and it's all right there where you can see it and investigate it for yourself. And that was in 1961. So she was imported. She was never a goddess from Indiana, okay? She was never a local goddess. She was what... William Henry Harrison said when he was attacking the Indians and saying it was manifest destiny and they had to have this sacred capital of the Indians for the purpose of establishing the throne of the true religion. And that's what this true religion is all about. It's about this goddess worship, the triple goddess worship, and building these cities for these purposes. This fall of man is because they obeyed the voice that came from this tree. And the voice that comes from that tree, there's all kinds of voices that come from that tree. If you walk around the base of it, you'll see on the light post, you'll see on one side there's a, a man with snakes all around his head, and he's yeah. got a real evil face. Yeah. And then you'll see a woman, and she's got snakes all around her face. Yeah. This, is the sacred, this is the sacred union we're talking about. That's the sacred union of the magic circle and the magic square, the male and the female, the god and the goddess. This is this is what they do. That's the, the, it's their foundation. This is this is the throne of their goddess. Once they establish that, then they've got to declare the state to be a goddess, which happened in 1961. Then they send all this, you know, all these images and set it up to, you know, to seal the deal. And Henry Herring, this goddess came to Indianapolis from New York. Okay. It came from the studios of Roman's Bronze Works, and the artist was Henry Herring. And he's the one who did the four plates that's on the federal obelisk that include, you know, the, the, the two males on the east and west and the two females on the north and south, which is symbolic of the whole north and south belongs to the goddess and the east and west belongs to the god. It, it, the, those plates... All the information on the Federal Obelisk downtown that has the Ten Commandments and the cross on it, both desecrated and profane, of course, and complete with the Zodiac. It speaks volumes of what's going on. The, the one plate on the north face of it that has the cross, that has the goddess on the cross, instead of Christ, which right. is blasphemy or whatnot. It, that's actually a design of what the city is. The, the crossroads going into the magic circle, it's... There's so much information on that federal obelisk alone, okay? And so I'm saying <laughs> that downtown, in the midst of paradise, in the middle of the garden, was this tree of knowledge, which is right now. So we can see the end because we can see the beginning, how this was actually the tree. This was actually the location. This was actually the fall of man. And man fell because he disobeyed God and was partakers of this forbidden knowledge. That's heavy, man. No, <clears throat> no it's not heavy. 
it's really heavy because when you understand it has to be a physical reality first to be a spiritual story or even part of the Bible, the end comes the end comes first before the beginning. In other words, before the beginning can ever happen, it's had to have already happened in the physical realm. You know, it's here, here's here's a perfect example. Okay, in the end, there is war in heaven. Okay, Satan gets cast out of heaven, and the message to the occupants down on the earth is, "Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil is down among you." Okay, now this is toward the end. Now, how can that be possible that Satan gets thrown out of heaven during this end time, and then the in, the inhabitants are are warned, "The devil has been thrown down and is dwelling among you." So. Good luck with that one. <laughs> now, right. Now, now, why would he give a message like that when Satan was on the earth when he was tempting Christ in the wilderness? Satan was on earth when he was messed with Job. Satan was on earth in the garden. So how could he be cast out in the end and say, woe well, to the heavens of the earth when he's been down here all along? Unless, and this is the only explanation possible, he gets cast out. He's down here now. He's always been down here now. And that's the mystery of God. And he, I mean, he is here, right? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's already been down here. So I'm, I'm saying he, he could not say, woe unto the heavens of the earth that Satan's been thrown down to you. He couldn't say that because they've, they've already been there. But it shows that that happens before he, he's a voice in the garden. That happens before he's tempting Christ in the wilderness. That it happens before all of that. It happens it happens now. It's happening now. Yeah. In other words, Satan is down here, but he's getting he's getting put into chains. And, and it, the state of Indiana is a perfect example. Okay. The state of Indiana is a goddess. Now, all her secrets have been found out and been revealed. Okay. So, number one, the uninitiative, no, the, the jig is up. So, number one, she can no longer be here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She's lost power and you can say well how can you prove that the state which is the goddess has lost power okay well she's the goddess of the courts okay then and, and she makes the laws that's if you go into the goddess and you read all this stuff it blows your mind of what her jurisdictions and what her attributes were and how it fits in with the you know the house chambers at, anyhow to make a long story shorter she, the courtrooms okay the city county building Boom, we won. The contest between the witch's pentagram and the menorah coming together, we won. Ten commandments where they desecrated and profaned it and put a, a graven image of the, the sun goddess on the commandments, boom, we won that. The federal, the federal obelisk, the, the five blocks of Babylon, I like to call it, the War Memorial Plaza, the one that's got, you know, the, the outside sunken garden with the outside altar, and then you've got the federal obelisk that has a cross and commandments on it, desecrated and profaned. Just being on the obelisk is a desecration of it. And then just south of that, you have the Temple of Ishtar. And then just south of that, you have Pan and Asherah and the daughter of Pan on her pedestal. Okay, these five blocks of Babylon, I call it. That was the federal challenge. Boom, Pan, we won. Okay, yeah, Pan's back up there, but all these things are just evidence of proof of their violations they're no longer powerful they're no longer effective they're just relics and evidence of the crimes that they committed the war has been won she's got ran out of indiana this is hard to grasp but this is the reality of it she got ran out of indiana in other words indiana apotheosized her made her the goddess of the state made the state the goddess actually and this was her domain this was you know the house chambers was and it's all good until somebody finds out the mystery and the secret and finds a design and all that other stuff and the uninitiative all of a sudden have the same same knowledge as they do as far as this this hidden staircase and this back doorway and this way of being immortal like they do and all of a sudden everybody's got that knowledge and it's it's game over for them and that's why it's the secrets are so important to them and they take these kind of death oaths you know never to reveal these secrets because that's how important they are because if the uninitiative learn about them, there's nothing that separates them from the uninitiative. And, you know, the boat can only hold so many people, in other words, what they're saying. Right. And if everybody knows about it, everybody's going to have the same access and everybody's going to have the same ability to establish their domains on the earth, you know, replicating the celestial. And then every. So, in other words, it don't work no more. So, her origin, getting back to the Empire State Building, was at the Empire State Building. Okay. 
Now check this out. A plane, a military plane, flies into the side of the Empire State Building. Long time before 9-11. This is back in 45. Right. The, the plane just happens to run into the studio of Henry Herring and the Romans Bronze Works and destroys all the evidence, all the documents, all the any kind of information that he had as far as where the origin of this goddess came from. Just like Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, that wasn't that wasn't a homegrown goddess, that was an imported goddess. One of the three goddesses. Hey, okay, it's a gay like, it's a gay man, isn't it? Well, it's male female. If you look at Monument Circle and you and you come in, you know, come in heading west on the east side of the monument, you'll see the goddess there, and it'll have fake breast on breastplate and a wig, and it's a dude, because you look at the biceps and everything else, it's a dude, but it's the goddess, and it's that whole hermaphrodite, you know, like Pan being male, female, right? you know, light, dark, it's that whole, that, that whole, that whole thing of Lucifer, when you understand there's two light bearers, one is Venus, which is the light bearer, and one is Capricorn, which is the light bearer, and both of these are that male, female, aspect of lucifer because when you understand you know god made man in his image male and female had he made them then you understand that god has both male and female as far as you understand that's that's a, that's why god is different than everybody else <laughs> he's both well yeah i mean you can't make a graven image but god can make a graven image and breathe life into it in other words that's what my message is, is, is my challenge is always, who is like unto God? Just because God can do something doesn't mean you can. Now, he can give you authority to do those things and even greater things than those. But just because God doesn't, just because God does something doesn't give you the right to think that you also can do it or should do it. And anyhow, the whole, the whole male-female thing is, is that, that whole Lucifer thing. So almost every statue that you see of these female goddesses yeah they're they got guns on them they're masculine and usually looking look like they're wearing wigs and that's that's the madness of the goddess worship <laughs> it's a circus it's very strange you know and once you once you take a look at that like just for instance just just the statue of liberty go take a look at that if you haven't looked at it get a close look at that look at some pictures of it isn't that looking kind of weird it does it always, looks like always, a guy Let's look at the foundations to get a, a good example. I mean, look at the foundation, look at the top, and always look where the shadow is because that's where they hide this stuff. But if you look at the top, the, the thorn, like the crown, the crown of sunbeams, and if her, her base, if you look at the base, it's a sun. It's a sun. She, she's the sun goddess. Just like the Statue of Freedom on Washington, D.C. on the Capitol, on the white dome, mm -hmm. she's the moon goddess. Okay? Like an... Indianapolis, Indiana, the goddess on the obelisk, she's the earth goddess. That's why she's on the god of earth's most upper point being horizontal. So, yeah, I mean, they laid it out for this sole special purpose. There is no other place on the planet that is more accurately described as the tree of forbidden knowledge. And then when you think about the two suns, okay, mm -hmm. as, a, as a result, like, say, America did you know, obey the voice of the serpent and make the great seal of authority and got the power and authority to do this. And they built this, built what the serpent told him to. And, and, you know, if you listen to the voice of the serpent, he wants you to build something. What's he wanting you to build? A dwelling place. Mm -hmm. So w w where does he dwell at? He dwells in the tree of knowledge. <laughs> hmm. So, so these obelisks and the purpose of them is evidence of listening to the, the serpent's voice and obeying him and disobeying God's voice. So you have a tree, and there's the fall of man right there. And the reason why the fruits of Washington, from the genocide to the slavery to the, the Civil War, when you think of Cain slew Abel, and it was his brother, and then to have a Civil War. I mean, think about the, think about the story of Genesis, and it's like, well, you can't prove that was ever true. And, you know, it says 6,000 years ago this happened, and the dinosaurs are such and such. Say, dig this. What if it happens at the end? before the beginning and the story in Adam and Eve is the story of mankind and the proof that man was guilty because man had partaken of this forbidden knowledge this enlightenment from this goddess for listening to her and she comes through with her end of the deal I mean you know they 
They want enlightenment. They want to be able to win wars. They sacrifice. Like Dr. Gatlin, he's downtown. He's at that monument circle where that obelisk currently is. It was the governor's mansion at the time. And he becomes enlightened from this goddess because, well, he's sacrificing or, or experimenting or practicing his surgeries, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and he becomes enlightened on how to create a weapon that will end all wars. Mm -hmm. The Gatling gun. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I mean, it's it's, it's yeah, well, responsible yeah, well, for killing thousands of people, right? Yeah, she gives them the technology they need to get the job done. And it's no coincidence the USS Indianapolis is the one that transported the bomb. I mean, that's specifically for a reason. It's coming from the place where the goddess dwells. And the goddess is the one that gives them the victory. So anything they can do to incorporate that into their belief system. You say, oh, that's hokey pokey. They don't believe that. They believe it. They build it. They spent billions upon billions and continue to this day to acknowledge her. Okay, the money that was supposed to go to the orphans and the widows from these world wars was spent instead of making to this temple, to this goddess. This goddess, which isn't a good goddess. She's very bad and very wicked. Anyhow, she's no longer here, okay? She gets kicked out of this domain because we won in the city county building, we won at the state level, and then we won at the federal level. All three contests. She's in charge of the courts. you think she would have victory, but she didn't. Mm -hmm. She's no longer here in India. She no longer has power because her secrets are revealed. That's the way the game's played. That's the rules. I didn't make them. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. So now you see her in New York on the Empire State Building, where she originally came from. Oh, so they, they moved her back to, um, to the Statue of Liberty. No, no, no. Well, yeah, that's, that's the home of Statue of Liberty. But the Empire State Building is where she originally came from. She was imported into Indiana from New York. After from the that Empire plane State hit the thing? Yeah, it was imported from Rome into New York, and then from New York into Indiana. Okay, the jig's up in Indiana, and she's back home in New York. That's why I'm saying it doesn't look good for New York. It's like me saying, woe to you, New York, because the devil's been cast out of our paradise and been kind of like thrown in to where it's, which she came from. See, that's the only power we have is to send them back from where they came from. It's not You can't kill evil. You can't kill Pan. You can make him wish he was dead, which is what we did, but you can't kill evil. You see what I'm saying? You can only send it from whence it came. And that's like when Christ went and, and you know, the demon said, send to someplace else. You know, so he sent him into the swine. They jump in the river and they can't swim. Anyhow, we only have the authority to send them from whence they came. And it's just odd that they would, the EPA would be involved in projecting this goddess's image on the building as if the building is her temple now. And then to realize, which we didn't talk about last show, was that was her place of origin as far as being made into physical reality by Henry Herring and the Bronze Works. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. I mean, I believe it. I totally believe it. It's just it's hard. It's hard to believe that Indianapolis is, is, is a, a large part of anybody's plan. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, there's there's more than corn in Indiana, and uh, it wasn't the spiritual capital of the Indians for no no particular reason. It was it was this was this was it. And when you when, when you read Genesis, and it talks about an angel being on both sides of paradise to keep people from coming in, and until you know the tree of life was also established in the garden. Mm -hmm. One is Atlantic, the other is the Pacific. That was the two guardians that kept this pretty much isolated until the time was that the tree of life had been established. Once the tree of life had been established in paradise, the Atlantic and Pacific was no more barriers to this place, which is paradise, which was the tree in the midst of it, which man partook of, disobeyed, and this is why there's a fall of man, and this is why you have to choose Christ. Not that you're automatically given grace because we all were sinners because of Adam, so therefore we're all saved because of Christ, and we don't have to pick. Once we understand that the tree of knowledge is here, and the fall of man is presented to us, and the reason why man did fall was because he disobeyed God, and he obeyed the voice of the serpent, and got enlightened, and went to the moon, and killed all these people, and what? And what? Who did you reject? There's a day of reckoning, and that time has come. So the whole purpose of the tree of knowledge to me and seeing it as a reality is, is 
is just mind blowing because it shows that we are indeed at the very last of days because we can already see the beginning from where we stand. It's wild, man. Um, <laughs> it's heavy duty stuff, but it's true. Who, who, who is it that's doing this? Like, like, can we name names of people in Indianapolis? Because there's got to be some, you know, people who are directly involved in this, and some people who Amazing. are not. It's the Masons. It's the Scottish Rite. It's the Shriners. It's 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 all of them. It's all of the bell worshippers went underground when they got defeated by Elijah. That that part of history, they kind of like went underground and got smacked down and learned a lesson. Okay, but they've always been around. They're the builders. They're the ones who dedicate the stone with the corn and the wine, the wine and the grain, and they had their blood sacrifices and they. You know, wait for the right star to be at the right place at the right time to establish some kind of energy into that stone. And they always use the northeast corner stone, you know, because that represents the the union of the light and the dark, the good and evil, the place where Pan sits. The throne of Pan is where paradise is and where there's a tree in the midst of paradise that's, you know, it's 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 adorable. You could look at it and. I mean, people go down there and stand in in in, in all of it yeah. once a year. You see thousands of them. So it fulfills every single thing, okay, that it talks about. So you can talk about Adam and Eve and six thousand years ago and dinosaurs and how did they coexist this that and the other. And all I'm saying is the word of God is true. The word of God will be established in physical reality, and that's how it became that spiritual reality that foretold things before they even happened, and why things will happen the way it was written. Because that's the way it goes. I didn't make it up. I didn't come up with the rules, but that's the way it is. And that's why I like truth, because truth makes things real easy to understand. There, there's nothing really to debate. That's the facts. If somebody else out there has got a, a better idea of where the tree of knowledge is or this whole nine yards, have at it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not selling books, and I'm not making money, and I'm not, you know, selling anything or trying to convert anything. I am just a seeker of truth. Truth is the only thing to me that is important, that is eternal, that is immortal, and has the power of resurrection is truth. You can't kill it. You can't defeat it. There's no weapon that can even put a dent in it. So that's what I'm all about. And all I'm saying is the reason I want to say this is what it is is because, well, that is what it is. I didn't design it. I didn't build it. I mean, you'd have to get the evidence from Henry Herring, but that all kind of got destroyed a B-52 running into the side of the building. Coincidentally, do you think that was on purpose, planned, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. For the, the things that I read, there was too many things that didn't make sense, like the pilot not being, you know, certified to even be flying the plane at the time. Oh, that's you, that, big, you mentioned that to me earlier in a conversation we were having. That's what you meant. I thought you meant the pilot uh, that hit the World Trade Centers on 9-11. You are talking no, about no, no. back in the 40s or the 50s. Yeah, 45. Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 so much shady stuff when you read about this it makes 911 conspiracies seem weak. I mean, it was all right there at the time where everybody could even see it and they didn't grasp it. And it's all about sacrifice, it's about insurance and it's about getting rid of evidence. Sacrifice, insurance, getting rid of evidence. That's the way they work. So that's one of the three motivators for what mostly goes on. Money, not power, to mention, not, 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 not to mention this goddess is this goddess that believes that in order to give birth, you first must destroy. And that's what she's all about is the destruction. And it's like, you know, playing the fiddle when Rome's burning. It's, it's the destroy everything because then something good will come from it. But it's got to be destroyed first. That's what <laughs> she's all about. You know? Right. Well, wow. It's, I mean, it, so how does that knowledge affect you in your daily life? Affect me? Yeah, like I've said a long time ago, it's like I don't mind dying. I just don't want to die stupid. I don't like I don't like being duped or tricked or hoodwinked or any. I don't like looking dumb. So I'm content with just knowing the truth, because the truth is a a a a, a funny thing. The more you embrace it, the more the more it's given to you. In other words. I don't I don't know how to explain it, but once once you find out what's important to you, it's it's like it's like throwing bread on the water. It comes back in loaves. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things that always comes back to you a lot more than you originally had. So 
how does it affect me? It, it affects me is knowing that, you know, what I've read, what I've heard, what I've always thought, and what I've believed. It's like lift up your head, redemption draweth nigh. In other words, these things don't bother me. They're all confirmations that all this is true. And it's undeniable. And I was just saying this this morning. I am happy, so happy, just knowing that I'm on the right side. Because knowing what I know, I would really hate to be on the wrong side. Because that's not a good side to be on at this particular time and juncture of mankind. Yeah, and so, if, it, if anybody out there is still listening and you are on the wrong side, you don't know if you're on the right side, it's real easy. We suggest that you get right with Jesus and God, or we, you know, you call him Yah. Yahweh, it's different words you could use. But yeah, the, the sinner's prayer, right, Stephen? Do you believe in that? I just call on the name of Yah and you'll be saved. I mean, you can use the Greek term. You can say, Jesus, read the book. He's the word. He's the light. He's the truth. We're all sinners. We've all sinned. And even no matter how righteous you think you are, every day you're going to fall. You'll die daily because that's the way it is, just like gravity. Someday this corruptible flesh will put on incorruptible immortality. But until that day, I understand that I am far, far sh shortcomings of mine. Uh, you know, just being able to be called one of his own to me is, is, a, is a wonderful thing. It's yeah, and so I, all you, basically all you have to do is say, God, you know, I, I want to believe in you. I, you know, want to Just say you're sorry. Uh, so the whole thing is, of your the sins. Whole thing, yeah, the whole thing is, no, you don't have to go through all your sins. I mean, you'd be there forever. All oh, you yeah, not all of them, but sorry. just say, I'm sorry. you got to acknowledge the truth. That's the whole thing. you got to acknowledge the truth. you got to acknowledge the truth, and that's basically acknowledging the truth, that there is a price to be paid for your sins and shortcomings in the fall of man, and he gave you a way out. He paid your price. He was willing to give down his life, lay down his life, and there's no greater love of man that he would lay down his life for his, for another. And he laid down his life, paid the price for you to have this truth, to have the light, to have the understanding that there is such a thing as forever and ever. There is such a thing as resurrection. There is such a thing as eternal life. There is such a thing as our, our beings the way they were intended from the beginning. You know? And it's, it's just a matter of, of acknowledging the truth that somebody paid the price for you. That somebody loved you that much regardless. And no matter even what you did yesterday or today or what you will do tomorrow, he knew all those things before he was willing to pay the price. And he paid the price for all of them. So when you get your salvation, don't let nobody doubt your salvation or try to take it from you. He paid the price for you because he loved you. So all you got to do is just acknowledge the truth. And then number two, appreciate the truth. Be thankful. Because when you give thanks... That pleases God. That pleases God. So, if you want to be a Christian, you want to be saved, you want to be born again. I don't even know if, if you should even use the word Christian. Being, you know, Christian has been changed into something that is more pagan in Rome. It's to be Christ-like, and there's not very many people that's close to being Christ-like down here. So, yeah, that's it. Mean, yeah, <laughs> you don't. But if you just want to be saved and know in your heart, and you want to get the baggage off your back, you want to be free. All you got to do is just acknowledge the truth. It's a wonderful thing. I've studied other gods and other goddesses, and there's nothing, there's nothing that compares to the story of our Yah, of his love, his grace and understanding, paying the price himself. I mean, there's, there's no greater story, if you want to call it a story, but it's the truth. And, you know... What's it going to hurt you? I mean, there's a lot of people out there who say, well, I don't, I don't want to become a Christian. Then I'll have to start going to church on Sunday and wearing, I have to cut my hair. I'll, I'll have to stop smoke. That's garbage. All that is garbage and trappings. And rituals and myths of man, okay? Because if somebody's going to make you feel bad because you do this, that, and the other, and they consider it a sin, they're just as sinful, and they don't even realize it. The ones who will throw the stones the quickest and hardest, We'll be opening presents on Bell's birthday and having no problem with it, so don't sweat it. Yeah, that's a good point. Saying, I, I wish everybody would come to the knowledge of Christ because it's just a wonderful thing. It's a freedom. When you see what's going on in the world and you don't have to fear about anything, you know your only job is to stand up and speak out because you're right. You got right on your side. You can't lose that way. And you've proven it over and over and over. 
try it. Like I say, prove all things, try it. It wasn't going to hurt to actually give it a try. You talk about feeling free and liberated, not having to worry about the trappings and the cares of this world and this life and what you see on TV and what you know. It would be a terrible time to be alone. And there is only one sure way of never being alone. And that is having him dwell within you. And you'll never be alone. And you'll always be comforted. And you'll always be grateful because he saw mercy on you to give you the ability to be free and not be in the bondage of the great deception that's even deceiving the elect, which you can see every day on TV. Pastors like James Robinson bragging about, I high five Pope Francis. Well, la ti da. <laughs> okay, and you represent Protestants, right? It's it's just sickening. I mean, I'm, it's not against the man. It's just, you know, somebody who says that I'm Jesus, and if you own a gun, you can't be a Christian. You start to sound like a socialist. You know, your children are being genocide over there. They're being slaughtered, and you're talking about tucking post-it notes under the head of your statues of sleeping St. Joseph. It becomes the point of such blasphemy. It's almost, it's, it's just, it's just maddening, okay, to hear what you hear on TV from people who are supposed to be the leaders and the shepherds and, you know, all this. People are being beheaded. Women are being raped where they're, they're being killed internally, okay? And you got pastors talking about prosperity. It's just, it's just, there's a reckoning coming. And the reckoning can't be stopped no more than truth can. And all I want to do is present to people what I see. And it's what I see, okay? You can counter and say, well, that's not the truth. You would have a hard time disproving it because there's so many things that add up that confirm exactly the way it's written is the way it is right now. And if you understand that the end comes before the beginning, if you understand the physical comes before the spiritual, then you understand the opportunity of establishing domain. Okay, there's a, that's a greater works he's talking about. But, you know, the, the purpose of all that is, is everybody's talking about, you know, the end, incoming, but the scriptures say the end will not come until first the son of perdition must be revealed and the mystery of God should be finished. There's, there's two things right there that have to be done before, you know, everybody talking about Christ's return this September 24th, whatever, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. That can't happen until those two things are done. The mystery of God is revealed and the son of perdition is revealed and the mystery of God is finished. And what about the son of perdition? That's Washington, George Washington, the one who sits in the throne of God, showing himself that he is God, sitting in the Holy of Holies, which is what the rotunda means. Sitting in his temple, which is your nation's capital, surrounded by his host, which is the three daughters of Allah, and his heavenly host, which is the pagan pantheon. Okay, apotheosized. Your founding father is declared to be equal to God, sitting in the throne of God, showing himself to be God. Now, that's the description they give in the Bible of the son of perdition. So you look at that, and you look at the apotheosis of George Washington, and you tell me of a better person who fits that fulfillment of scripture who says that the son of perdition is, he was and is not, yet is. So everybody looking for this coming antichrist, well, if you, gotta, if you could read the Bible and it says he was and is not, yet is, then you would know that he would have to be a person from the past. He right. Was. He is not, which means not in the present tense, yet is, meaning he's still, his name, his persona, the president, whoever it is, represents Washington, the power is in Washington. So he is not, he was, but he is not. So if you're looking for a son of perdition that fulfills that, well, Washington also fulfills that. So, I mean, what? What I'm saying is it can happen any time now because the mystery of God has been completed and is finished and has been explained, probably not to the best it can be or will be in the future, but at least you got the basic idea, and I think the more people understand it and actually comprehend it, then all these things that they had questions about in the Bible, as far as the doublets and things repeating themselves, makes a lot more sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's wild. Um, well, I mean, thanks for that revelation, Stephen. I'm going to chew on that for a while, you know, uh, let that one soak <laughs> in. I mean, just just getting my brain to, to accept that 
downtown Indianapolis was the physical was is will be <laughs> the physical location of the Garden of Eden. I mean, that's that's a new one. I'm gonna have to mull that one over, you know, and let that one sink in. But I really like I like it. Um, I find no well, reason to disagree. You know, I don't have. It anything. was interesting to me, and I mean, as as far as people talking about, you know. 6,000 years ago and the dinosaur bones this, that, and the other, when you understand the word will never be proven wrong and the word is always right and the beginning of man would have to happen after the end. So it'd have to be getting set up like right here, right now to where there is a tree, there is a dwelling place of the serpent, which is here, and that's at this gateway, at this doorway, the gates of hell, you could call it, it's established their throne, there's the tree. The tree is the same kind of tree, a tree of knowing, the tree of good and evil, it's, you know, like, like I was always wondering as a kid, it's like tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, is knowledge of, of good wrong or is, is knowledge of, of, of evil wrong? Yeah. Tree of knowledge of good and evil. And I was always trying to decipher the difference between good and evil and if that was right or wrong. Not understanding, it was trying to show the combination of opposites. It's like the tree of light and darkness, the tree of male and female, the tree of it's good and evil. It's a tree of combining the opposites. And that is what the tree is made of, is the combined of opposite. And that's why they delight in desecration. That's why they love to take something like the cross and desecrate it or the commandments and desecrate it. Because that's what gives them their power and their energy by profaning and desecrating, by combining the opposites. So, yeah, it's but, part of their craft. But now that it's gone over, now that the, the goddess has gone back to New York, what, what does that leave us with? Well, our domain. She's lost her power. She's lost her domain. So she goes back to her point of origin. So she goes to New York until, well, she kind of like devastates that place. Mm. Because you got to admit, Indiana's nice, but it's devastated compared to the paradise it was and will be. But now she's in New York. So it's like saying, woe to the citizens and inhabitants of New York for she's now your problem. She's back <laughs> home. You made the mistake of declaring it as such. She's your problem now. And they and have see, no it's, idea. It's a matter of casting it's a matter of casting casting it out, sending it back from which it came from. We established our domain by calling it out, by exposing its dark secrets, by diminishing its power and authority, by challenging it, proving it no longer has power and authority, by beating it, and that's what victory and why victory is so important to them, but they don't seem to have that anymore here. She's left here and gone back to her point of origin, which is back to New York, back into the Empire State Building from whence she came. Now, she's going to have to go back to Rome after something happens to New York. Mm, That's what I'm saying as far as where she goes. Like I say, she don't have to go home, but she can't stay around here. <laughs> and it's a goddess, so it's intangible, right? We're not actually talking about a statue or whatnot. It's a, it's a goddess, spiritual dwelling. It's a force. It's a force. spirit. It's a, it's a living entity that you can't see that definitely has power to control things because it has been for quite some time ship shaped or calm reptilians calm whatever you want to it has the power if they can get man to obey them and sacrifice in their name and build things in their name oh it's a reality because you got people with buttons on nukes that believe these kind of things so it's a reality <laughs> yeah yeah well has, should indianapolis get nicer now that that uh, she's left well, it's getting nicer in my neck of the woods. I mean, there's a judgment day coming. There's a purification coming. But the thing is, when the visitation comes, is your neighborhood going to be clean? Or is your backyard going to be one of those kind of things where you was all cozy with the way things were going down here and part of something that you shouldn't have been part of? It's about cleaning the house, you know? It's not about, you know, expecting miracles and this, that, and the other. All I know is there was a a state that had been officially declared to be a, a goddess, okay, which is like the Romans used to do, as far-fetched as that seems, they do that, and they do their sacrificing, and they do get enlightened with technologically advanced weapons and stuff like that to give them the victory. This is an ancient, ancient, ancient religion, dude. I mean, this is one of those things that there's believers from way back when, when, you know, Roman soldiers fought wars and sacrificed and believed these things. Or they wouldn't dare do them. What would they benefit from being caught dabbling in black magic and witchcraft and sorcery? He's claiming to be a Christian nation in the middle of the Bible Belt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, would it? 
Um, it's it is wild. I mean, out of all like people think Christians are morons, you know what I mean? Believing in fantasy and stuff. I mean, de- de- turning a state into a goddess, like I don't know, you know, it different strokes for different folks, I suppose. I can't say that it's weirder than than us, but I find it. Yeah, if you can't, if you find Christianity hard to swallow. You should check out what these pagans are doing, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just such a blatant violation of the law when you think about it. There's supposed to be some kind of separation of church and state. And yet, secretly, the state is the goddess. So, so it just, it's just mind-boggling. It's I mean, it mind- really is mind-boggling. It's because mind- they used to kill Indians saying they were, they were primitive, they're, they're primitive uh, savages that got all this kind of, uh, you know... Uh, superstitious yeah, that's what it is superstitious right. primitive and yet they're doing the same things they did back in the time of rome thing and they're all enlightened and you know they're well, you gotta give them credit they, they actually do believe their spells work because most people don't see it they don't see it and it's right in front of their face i was gonna they don't say get it. By it even though it's the most offensive thing there is the, yeah the, the fact that nobody can wrap their mind around it and actually say you know what this is freaking weird um that's a testament to the, the this magical spell ability. You know what I mean? Like, why is it just? Why is everyone? Why is everyone so blinded to this? It's just something you kind of got to have to consider. No, it's it's a spell strong delusion. I mean, it's it says right there in the Bible that they will be put under a spell of strong delusion that they would believe a lie. And you say, well, who's making a spell and how are they doing it? Well, that's why the pagans delight in desecration because that's their source of their power. When they combine the pure with the profane. It's like, you know, it's like worship to their God, which is a combination of all things. But when they combine the pure with the profane, it's a thesis and antithesis, and it produces a synthesis, which is something that you can't see the evil. It's like the Ten Commandments at the state capitol. They're there for almost 33 years, and nobody realized the Second Commandment was missing and that there was a graven image of a pagan deity inscribed on the tablets. All, it, all I could see was the Ten Commandments, and ooh. It's special. Just keep that hush hush. Now, do you think there's a there's a, a an under another reason why it didn't get to last their thirty three years? And the Masons like have a big thing with thirty three. That's their big number. Yeah, but I don't have I don't have any control over that stuff. There are so many things like that. I mean, it's just like that plane hitting the Empire State Building on the seventy ninth floor. Seventy nine. The year seventy nine to me was real significant because it was the year that I graduated. It was the year another special being of mine was born. And it was also a, the year of the Islamic Revolution began. So 79 was real significant. And then you hear about the plane hitting his studio, which was on the 79th floor. It's like, what? Wow. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of that. When you get into the matrix, what I call the matrix is nothing more than the truth. In other words, what's going to happen will happen because it's already happened. And the we, reason we can prove that it's already happened is because, well, it's already been written about. You know, right. what we're talking about as far as my tomorrows, my tomorrows are all past history. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do. It's very cyclical. <laughs> cyclical. Yeah, it, it's it's cyclic. That's for sure. Well, Stephen, mm-hmm. I think that that's probably about enough. I think that's all that my brain could take. I'm sweating over here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, th- uh, thanks for hitting us one time. <laughs> with some more knowledge straight to the dome like that's uh you know take people hopefully they could they take this and they they, and they run with it you know hopefully there's a blessing (laughs) a blessing on this podcast to go some places what time it is that's the whole purpose is just know what time it is yeah and know what the reality of the word is if there if there's a tree of knowledge of good and evil there is a tree of knowledge of good and evil down here there is it's wild you know Wake up, yeah. recognize, you know, maybe it is, you know, it's at least worth looking into. Do you want to go into the other side and say, oh, well, you know, and Christmas tree, no big deal. <laughs> it's worth looking into. Yep. Yeah, I got some YouTube videos about uh, different things about downtown. Um, There's so many of them, you know, and I'm trying to put a couple of them on each of the, you know, show notes page. Um, but uh, do you have a specific one you recommend for this episode? Uh, that Living Dead Girl one has a, a good uh, coverage of Monument Circle. And then there's uh, the Foundation of Indianapolis, a secret uh, Masonic 13. There's, there's I, If you want the information, there's tons of videos that I put together that explains just about everything that I couldn't over the radio. 
Yeah. Find quite interesting. That's just go and to YouTube, crazy. search Steven Schroeder, or check out the show notes page. There'll be a link. Yeah, check out the description in this video for links to Steven's videos and all that good stuff. Steven, thanks again for your time, man. Hey, and did I mention it's free? <laughs> it's yeah, it's totally free, you know? Why wouldn't it be? I, that's, I don't like these that's people. That's the way truth's supposed to be. Truth is supposed to be free. Right, right. So, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity once again to uh, take your time and to uh, tell you how I see things. Well, we appreciate it, Stephen. You've got a one of a kind viewpoint, and I want to get it out there. I, I, if nothing else, I love hearing it. You know, I'm going to go home and listen to this episode and soak it in. So, all right. Well, I appreciate. It. We'll talk to you next time. All right, Stephen. God bless. You too. Later.